Hello everyone. This video is for Sherry who had a question about changing the SVG file in the Daisy Days quilt pattern into an embroidery file if you wanted to stitch out the Daisy Days uh, applique pattern in your embroidery machine. How would you go about uh, converting that file into a stitch file? So uh, here you'll see on the screen uh, I have in brilliance stitch artist level two and so I have this open on my desktop I'm hoping that you can see everything I'd really like to know how people <laughs> actually take videos of the screens of their computers but on a whim this is what we're gonna do and I'm hoping that you can see everything so my first uh, thought Sherry would be uh, what is the size of your embroidery hoop because when you do the applique for the scent for the daisy, it measures five and a quarter inches from the left to the right or the widest points of the flower. So you're gonna need to make sure that your hoop uh, accommodates a, an embroidery uh, design that is at least five and a quarter inches wide. So here I have my hoop open. This hoop is, I think it's, eight by 10. And so this will just work. Um, no, I'm sorry. This hoop, let me back up a second. Sorry, a six by 10. <laughs> I have the maxi hoop, but uh, we're going to go ahead and work with this oval hoop, which is six by 10. So I have Stitch Artist open and I'm going to open up the um, SVG file this time. So I am going to create designs up on this top bar and we're going to go back over and import the vector image. And this is how I designed it. Now, let me just say I have it like this because I did not offer any embroidery designs for the flower. This was designed so that you could really quickly convert this over to your paper cutters and cut out fabric using like a brother scan and cut or a Cricut. And so that is why it's set up like this. I did not design this pattern to be an embroidery pattern. So to turn this into an embroidery pattern, there's going to have to be some manipulation. And uh, it's not difficult, but it is gonna be a little bit time consuming. So here are my uh, six petals and then the circle center of the flower going to go ahead and move these petals out of the way and I do that by clicking on them and I'm holding down the control keys so that I can select all of them and move them out of the way. The next thing I want to do is click on the circle and we're going to put that in the center of the hoop just like that. And uh, you can do that by clicking on the little arrow and then this box appears and it says center designs in the hoop. I'm really sorry. I'm not really great with <laughs> tutorials on how to manipulate software, but I'm hoping that you can maybe even pause this and take some notes. So we'll start with the center of the hoop, the circles in the center. And now we're going to play with uh, manipulating all of these flowers and each one will have to be done individually and we're going to eyeball this we'll put that top petal there we'll click on another one and we're going to rotate that by clicking on this little blue circle up in the corner we'll rotate it around and hopefully that's pretty straight and we'll bring that to the bottom of the flower We'll grab another circle, or another petal, I'm sorry. And now we're just gonna start fitting these in. You can see it's gonna take a little bit of patience. And if you're familiar with them in Brilliance, you might be a little bit quicker than I am. We'll click on this one. We'll rotate it and bring it over. 
And of course, there's going to be all kinds of little uh, adjustments that need to be made. <laughs> Just like that. We'll bring this other one over. And you're just going to fit the petals all the way around that center circle, just like I'm doing here. Again, I'm using the <clears throat> excuse me, the SVG file that comes with the pattern. My, tum my stomach is rumbling. There we go. That's pretty close right there. So you can see the size of this design pretty much fills up my 6 by 10 hoop. And so if you have limitations, like the little foot uh, only goes so close to your hoop, <laughs> uh, you might even have to reduce the size of your flower if you have a, a hoop that is smaller than this. Uh, and that would still look okay. So once you've manipulated all of your petals around your flower, now's the time when you start converting your SVG file into an applique file. And it's just like I was showing in my last video from this morning, converting the FCM, the cut file, into applique. It's exactly the same. In Stitch Artist Level 2, you have these menus in this section right here. And on the top, uh, four boxes from the left is the applique button. And just like that, we've clicked on the applique and it's, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, the default stitch shows up as an e-stitch. Uh, you can go to the properties menu. Let me see if I can swing you around <laughs> so that you can see everything. Here's your properties menu. And you can change that from an e-stitch to a blanket or a satin or a zigzag stitch. Uh, so we'll go ahead and change that to a satin stitch. I like to go ahead and uh, make sure that it ties at the beginning and the end. Just like that. So that's the little bow uh, icon right in the center. And then you can start playing with the density. If you need to uh, lower the density, that really depends on the type of material you are doing your applique on uh, and the type of thread. So all of those play a role in this. Let's see, where was I? <laughs> Click on the file. So let's take a look let's do a fabric preview and let's take a look at how this is going to stitch out because you would do the same thing for all of your pieces let's go ahead and do that by individually selecting each piece and hitting the applique button up at the top And then the center circle, there we go. See, we might actually have to make that circle a little bit smaller. Let's just do that for a minute. Of course, you know, you're gonna need to actually do all of these things and really take your time and adjust everything nice and pretty. <laughs> I'm just trying to go through this quickly so that uh, you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to, let's see, where was that? I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the fabric preview. There we go. I don't know why I did that. Uh, 
I thought, whoa. <laughs> See, give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and put a fabric preview on all of this and then we're going to uh, go to the top and do a stitch preview. Okay. <laughs> So let's go ahead and move you back this way because I want to show you how we're going to see what this looks like during the stitch out. So what should happen when you bring this to the machine is the first thing it'll do is go through and do a single layer stitch. Uh, and that's the position of your flower petals. And then it'll do all of those and then the circle. And then it will stop. And then you remove your hoop and you gather all of your pieces that you've cut out either by hand or with your cutting machine like a brother scan and cut or a Cricut. And you lay those right over the single line and fuse them in place and then return the hoop back to the machine. And then it will do your satin stitch on all of your pieces. So if we come right up here to the top, the stitch, stitch simulator it should show you, you have all of these starts and stops up here. Let's see what this looks like. Let me see if I can bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, let's play that, oops, play. I'm going to speed this up so it goes by pretty quick. So I was wrong. <laughs> For each individual flower, it's going to do the running stitch. It'll stop. You pull it off the hoop. You pull the hoop off the machine, fuse your flower petal in place, and then uh, return it. And then it does the satin stitch. Now, of course, you can change that too. You can go through and change all of your colors. And so it'll stitch all of your uh, positions out at one time and then return the hoop. And you're only doing that one time. Uh, it takes a little bit more work and a little bit more knowledge uh, with the program to start manipulating your colors and your color stops. But this is the general idea of how you would change the SVG file, the file that's actually included with the pattern, into a stitch file just like what you see here. Uh, it's certainly doable, especially if you have a hoop that accommodates the size of this applique design and with some knowledge of Embrilliance. And this is, again, Stitch, stitch Artist Level 2. And so uh, if you have any questions, Sherry, I would be glad to try to help. Um, and I hope that this has answered your question. <laughs> I will see you all uh, really soon. I look forward to spending some time with you on Monday as we do the next step in this quilt. Bye, everybody.